Money without brains is always dangerous. Napoleon Hill. Hey Hustlers, Christian here, host of The Hustle Show. Thank you so much for tuning in today to episode 18. I'm very excited for today's guest as she is a true inspiring entrepreneur, Mindy Burnett from MB and Associates and Command Communications. She is the founder of both companies in the media industry. And the reason why I wanted to have her here is because she has over 10 years of being a news reporter, a TV anchor, and yet, you know, she was happy doing that. She wanted to transition into something bigger and better. So she ventured out, started on her own, her, her business from home, and started with a few clients. It grew to the point where she's running a super big PR agency for athletes and actors and, and big companies and, you know, some small companies as well. And she's been featured all over the media and her personality is just super outgoing. I love her story and that's why I wanted to have your and that's why I wanted to have Mindy today on the show to share her story with you. It's amazing as you will tell right away. And before we, you know, before we continue with the with the episode and I just want to be transparent with you. We did record this episode in a little bit of a rush because Mindy had a family emergency, so we had to rush it. And but you know, she was so excited to be in the show that she couldn't just miss the opportunity and I couldn't I couldn't skip her episode either. So we try to to rush it as much as we can and I really appreciate Mindy to you know, give me, gave me a chance to, you know, even, even though she had the emergency, she still wanted to do the interview. So we kept going and, and, you know, I, I'm being, I want to be, I want to share this with you because I'm very transparent and I, I like sharing with you the behind the scenes. So we, we left that, you know, a few conversations in between the, the, the chat that you're going to hear right now. So during your conversation with Mindy, you're going to hear a few things that she was saying that, you know, she had a few minutes left and we try to rush it and we try to get the whole, the whole, story out in this episode as much as we could okay so remember that all the show notes for today's episode will be available at the hassle show that co slash tsh18 and before we jump into the call with mindy make sure you hit that subscribe button as it will help a lot of other people to find the show when you hit the subscribe button you tell itunes and youtube that the, the show is is worthy of your time so it'll mean the world to me if you hit it right now if you subscribe to the show okay so without her to do, let's jump into the call with Mindy Varnett from mbandassociates.com. All right, Hustlers. So today we have Mindy in the show. Welcome, Mindy. Thank you. So fun to be here. I'm very excited. I, I mean, I think you are. We had a, a PR uh, small company back in the day. Uh, you know, the first few episodes, she's my very good friend. She's doing well. But I'm excited to have uh, to have you and to see what's, the, you know, the, the journey from a uh, from a TV reporter, you know, the anchor now to building a super big PR agency, oh, you know, dominating, you. dominating the region. So I can't, I can't wait to hear that story. Okay. Well, where do you so, want me to start? <laughs> so let's, let's, let's start a little bit about your, your background. How did, how did, um, uh, MB and, and Associates PR started? What's the back, okay. what's the story there? Okay. Well, I was in television news for 10 years and loved it. Um, but for a variety of reasons, decided that it was time to segue out. And, you know, it, to be honest with you, I started my own company out of default. I left TV news and went to work for another public relations firm in Philadelphia, which is the part of New Jersey that my, my main headquarters is based. But we also have a presence in New York City now, too, which I'm really excited about. Yay! But, yay! Congrats. <laughs> yes, thank you. But um, it, at any rate, I, I quickly learned that um, at least working for that one person who will remain nameless for this conversation, um, it wasn't a fit for me. I felt as though I was literally living the movie Devil Wears Prada and I wasn't the Prada <laughs> lady. <laughs> And that's the other all I'll one. say. Right, um, right. But I will say this: in um, having my television news background and thinking as a reporter, I saw that I was able to get her clients booked 
quickly on a variety of different platforms. It came very easy for me, I think, because I had like the news background and I have a, what I think is a bubbly personality. And I've been, I've been told that too. It just was an easy fit. So I left um, and truthfully, just in an effort to pay my car note um, and, you know, make ends meet, I uh, was lucky to land a, a, what I thought was going to be a very short lived client and um, of my own and kind of like constructed an agreement very short term because I didn't want to make a long commitment. And via that one client, um, my business just skyrocketed. I was able to get her a tremendous Sorry, I'm, I, I was I was able to get her I'm gonna take it off the hook, a tremendous amount of press um, in a very short period of time, and um, you know was just able to do a, a lot. And she had a lot of uh, customers and clients that of hers that saw what she was getting in the media, and then I got a lot of referrals. So I really didn't seek out to be an entrepreneur or anything like that. I'm certainly blessed and grateful that things happened the way they did. But that's basically how MB and Associates was born. Kind of. And so, yeah. And so, you know, PR and media, it's, it's completely new to me that I've never done this before. So, and, and sometimes, you know, one of the things that I, I'm kind of trying to understand is PR, right? I mean, how does it work? You pitch it, you do, you know, how do you pitch it? Who do you pitch it? It's right. like all the questions. So every time I talk to somebody, I mean, like yourself, uh, you know, it's fascinating to me that you have. I think I think the the secret of PR and I don't know if, if I'm right or not but it's it's all relationship based right a lot of it is I mean you have to really you know know who to pitch um, for me it's doing your homework and your due diligence really every day because you know the media changes by the minute right so reading the papers knowing who's covering what beats um, being abreast of new shows that are you know coming out and about platforms such as yours congratulations by the way on your Thank new you. show you know things like that just you know being very in the know and yes as you said formulating relationships with reporters and editors and so forth and so on so that you know um you know who to pitch and what they're doing and stuff like that so um you know yeah just doing your due diligence so it sounds like you know the company started not because you wanted to start a company but because you were you were having fun and you were loving what you were doing and you wanted a change, right? So you got your first client and, and everything, and everything skyrocketed from there. But did you have any doubts that you could start a business out of doing this back when you started the company? Um, I was afraid. I mean, I wasn't sure how uh, sustainable it was going to be. And, you know, you literally, as an owner of a business, have to wake up hungry every single day um, in order to, um, you know, continue to grow. You just never know what's going on in the in the world of the client. You know, they might be having a bad business run or, you know, they might be short staffed and no longer can um, support PR because they just don't have the wherewithal and the time to, to do that because it's an additional responsibility for some part on the client too. So it's, it is a little bit scary, but I knock boys and it's now for I these knock on my head, like all over the place for 15 <laughs> years. And I will say this, like I've been grateful um, to also start another company um, almost four years ago with um, a very seasoned news veteran who has an even more compelling resume than mine. Um, he's my partner. That company is called Command Communications. And we kind of made that a sister company to my PR firm, MB and Associates, where we do strategic social media campaigns and video production. Um, I should mention his name's John Lieberman, but at any rate, um, you know, we, we together have grown that business because of the success of my PR firm, which is fantastic. So. And I think they go hand in hand. I mean, so it's a perfect sister company to have, definitely. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Yeah. They complement each other, wonderful. Yes, I love that. So during their journey of starting both, I mean, how was that like for you, uh, you know, when it comes to emotions and, and, and the, was it demanding or was it super easy for you to just, you know, start opening offices and hiring people? How was the journey? What was it like? Um, it was scary because I really didn't know what to do in that regard. It just kind of like went with my gut. I, um, I was basically, you know, kind of never an owner of a business, never a manager, you know, in news, I 
you know, did my job. I was an anchor reporter, um, but I didn't have to manage anybody under me, so to speak. Um, not to say these women are under me, but you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't really responsible for anybody other than myself. So I, that's just trial and error. I, they know this though, having worked in a variety of different newsrooms and for that person I alluded to earlier, I know, I know that I didn't want to be like a bossy boss. I wanted to be someone that was approachable and someone that could basically be somebody that the women that, and men that work with me um, would feel comfortable going to with problems and, you know, questions and that kind of thing. So um, I was just very, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get. So, so through the journey of, you know, the, the ups and downs and the struggles and trying to figure out, I, I get you know, because you didn't have the business background, you're basically growing as, as it goes and you were trying to figure it out, right? I mean, how to hire and who to hire, where did you need the help? Was that, was that difficult to figure it out? Did you have some mistakes on the way or? Yeah, or? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yes, I, I made some mistakes on, there were obviously some issues that came along the way with mistakes that I made hiring because when you, you know, you're doing an interview with somebody, obviously everybody's putting on their best performance and putting their best foot forward and you don't really know what you're going to get until they're here and working um but thankfully in my 15 years I could probably count on my hand the number of people that weren't necessarily fit so you know a couple times it was just like a personality situation you have to really be um very easygoing for the most part and to deal with a variety of different personalities um on this side of the fence whether it be the client or just dealing with the media um because not everybody is fuzzy and warm so to speak um and then also just really good multitasking um, skills are important to have and you know the ability to just kind of like be a team player and jump in if needed and not necessarily accounts that are assigned to you just if you another um, uh, you know associate in the office might have an overload of things just because we have no control when the meeting wants to do the story and you know it, they may not be able to handle all of it everything's like immediate deadline sensitive if you will so it's just good to have a good attitude where people can kind of jump in and, and volunteer to help out even if it's something that they essentially were responsible for right right and and, and i i think you touch uh, you know some really good points there when it comes to trying to hire somebody i mean in the interview they look charming and everything is is pink and super nice and then they start working and and you see that it's not the right fit right and right. and you know that's i think that's another thing of entrepreneurship that a lot of people don't talk about right because they say, okay, well, the business starts to grow and, you know, start hiring and the company explodes from there. Right. Like, you know, we're talking real right now. I mean, you had, you had your, your struggles there and, and I mean, I know it was a few, but you know, you still had those struggles and do you, did you ever have one of those moments that, I mean, it was too many things going on. I mean, I know you have your family and things that you just felt like you wanted to quit or something with your company and just go get another anchor uh, position or something? Well, I mean, there's, you're always going to have bad days, but um, yeah, I'm not, I would lie if I said that the thought didn't cross my mind. It wouldn't necessarily be that I would want to go back into the news. Um, I do think this is the field for me. Sometimes, you know, in the past, I wondered if maybe it would make more sense to work in the corporate sector as an in-house PR person. Um, I do a lot of work in the medical industry. I represent a lot of doctors. I, I represent a division of Thomas Jefferson University Hospital and the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center, where I do have some one-on-one um, -on -one dealings on the corporate level, and I enjoy that a lot. So um, it's obviously more secure, and I wouldn't, I'd be able to actually go on a vacation and you know just be responsible to um to check you know voicemail and you know emails and things like that but um you know um but i i love my business um it is my baby and you know i feel responsible for the employees that i hire they they've invested their lives into this company and i wouldn't just like jump ship like that right right you have a lot of people that now depend on you and and is, is that another motivation for you to keep going? Yes, I, I very I feel very responsible to the employees that I have working um, with me. And um, yeah, I wake up every day, not only for my children um, and, you know, obviously needing to earn a living and do well for them and, and my own livelihood, obviously, but I wake up for them um, as well. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's really good to always have that vision. What are you trying to achieve? And in your case, I mean, you were trying to, it doesn't sound to me that you were you wanted to be like the biggest firm in town you basically wanted to 
you know, change your path and, and help others on the way. I mean, all your employees that are that depend on you and that's pretty awesome. That's a really good, uh, you know, I mean, and, yes, that was initially my thought, but now of course I want to grow and, and, you know, and, and thrive right, and, right, know, right. Huge and get a clients all over the country and there and then some, um, but I, that wasn't like some people are like, they just are born and want to open a business. This is what they want to do. Like that wasn't really me. I wanted to do public relations work. Um, and you know, branding and use my experience having been a news reporter in some shape, but, um, but I fell into this and it obviously was my calling and this is where I'm supposed to be. So I embrace it and I'm grateful that, you know, sometimes, sometimes everybody says, and I, I believe this, but you know, you don't really know, um, everything happens for a reason, right? But you don't always know the meaning of why things are happening to you until later on. And this is a perfect yeah. example of that. I remember I was so like. I don't want to say against the grain, but I just wanted to, you know, I mean, this isn't really what I wanted to do, like own my own business. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just do it for a little bit. Da, 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 da. And I still continue to send out resumes and stuff. And, you know, I was getting some opportunities, but they weren't really what I wanted. So I kept it in this vein and it, you know, and then as I was, you know, pursuing other options, this side, the business was just growing and flourishing. So I finally was like six months in, I said, you know, I should just do this because I'm doing much more, it's much more lucrative in this, doing this on my own than I ever was working for anybody. And, you know, I had control of my destiny, like I, as hard as I wanted to work, the, the benefits were all mine in a sense, like that kind of thing. So anyway, I know I take a long time to answer a question, but. No, that's, yeah. you know, this is, that, that's what this is all about. I mean, share things that you probably never shared before in an interview. Um, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we, you know, we focus on different stuff, you know, different questions, different answers. And that's what we're looking for, for, you know, for all the hustlers that are listening to us right now, we want to be real. We want to, you know, inspire them to take action, go after what they want, build it, grow it. But, you know, just keep in mind that it's going to be hard, you know, I mean, yeah. in your case, how, how were those first six months emotionally and physically in, when you started your business, when you started MBN Associates? I mean, they were actually easier, I have to say, because I was working from home. I only had three clients, you know, I worked and worked. And then I was like, you know, I did a lot. I got them a lot of results and I felt like I actually had time to go to lunch and, you know, go do things midday for myself and errands. I didn't really have any employees to manage. It was really when I took on more accounts and then had employees to manage that it became like much more demanding and stressful um but i wouldn't trade it for the world but in the beginning it was you know i guess like for me in the beginning the concern was like how long can i keep this going like how long is the business gonna do and you know how you know it's just always work i still am now but i don't think that ever goes away I mean, i'm <laughs> blessed to say that i have 25 regular clients on retainer um on the nb and associate side and we have five like solid clients on the command communication side and that's only growing too i mean that's a much younger business obviously um but every day i'm always worried i don't <laughs> you know <laughs> every day you know i just like that's just me though i guess that's why i do well because i've never come in and i'm never comfortable and i always want more so Yes. And I love that. I mean, it's always, as soon as you feel comfortable, it's time to go do something else because yeah, I you, agree. Should, you shouldn't feel comfortable, right? You should yeah. always be exposing yourself and pushing yourself over the limit. Yeah, totally agree. I love that. Very cool. So, I mean, through the journey, the ups and downs and all these years, you know, the company is already pretty successful and it's growing exponentially. Thank you. And, but what would you say was, was one of the hardest moments that you had as, as an entrepreneur, you know, building this company that you said, no, this is, this is way too hard. Do you have one of those? I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, it's always horrible when you lose an account. And even if it's nothing that you're really directly involved with, I, I guess for me, the most frustrating part of my job is when the media does something that is obviously the media is not, it's not like a commercial, you know, it's an op editorial opportunity and the clients are not paying for it. It's all editorial, you know, and I fully get that, but sometimes the clients don't. And so they yell at me <laughs> or maybe they don't yell at me, but they take it out on me, I guess is a better way to put it. Um, when it was, is something that I literally have no control over at all. And it may not even be that big of a deal, but to the client it is, and therefore they're right. Right. But 
you know, I have to often say I'm sorry for a lot of things that I literally have no control over. And thank goodness it doesn't happen often. It really doesn't. It happens maybe once or twice a year, if that. But like when there's breaking news or it's edited a certain way or maybe they didn't get as much on air time as they thought they were going to get from an interview or whatever it may be. I mean, I literally have nothing to do with that, but yet I'm still the one that has to do the scapegoat <laughs> and I'm okay with that. But that's the only part of the whole thing that I guess I would, I don't love and to be honest. Right. Right. Those are, those yeah. are the bad things. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's a, I mean, I it, you know, it, I put my tap shoes on, the thing I took yeah. <laughs> I had to do a shuffle hop stab. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it can't be everything nice. I mean, there has to be some, some, you know, down to it and, and a few activities that are not very yeah, pleasant. That's any, that's any career. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, everybody's and, got ups and downs and things that happen, but that, so that happens to be one of the, the pits of this business, at least on that media side, because we're very much media strategists. That's really, I say 90% of what the PR side does is media positioning. So that's because of oh. my background. That's the way I made the company. It doesn't have to be that way, but I like it. So, um, so, yeah. so compare, compare now that, you know, you, now that you can look back and you can, you can, you know, like we were saying earlier that when it happens, you don't know why it happens, but once you, now that you're here and you look back, now you understand, oh, I'm glad this happened. I'm glad that happened. Comparing uh, starting MB and Associates versus, com you know, starting command communications, Mm -hmm. Was it easier for to start command communications as your second yes. company? Yes. Much easier because I already had a, the, the, this, the background. I mean, my partner did not. I mean, he had a ton of media experience and he's brilliant, but he didn't have the entrepreneur, you know, background that I had. So we complimented each other. Great in that regard. But because I already had already worked as my, as my own boss for 10 years, 11, maybe but when we started that business, it was much easier. And I already kind of knew how to get in business. And I knew, how to, you know, I basically like now meet people, they call me for PR and I sell them both services because it really benefits them to have both so it's mm -hmm. um you know i often call myself the rainmaker i'm very good at bringing in business i look at it kind of like the way i would pitch a news director or get someone to you know say yes to do an interview with me when i was a reporter um i see what is in it for them i present all of those opportunities to them and i'm sincere so i feel like people you know, trust me and believe me because they know I'm going to work real hard for them. And I definitely do. I'm in it like full hands on deck, like for every account, not just like kind of behind the scenes type of a bot, like my owner of a business. I'm very, very much their point person for literally everything for the most part to my own detriment, probably. But I do think that's what makes us successful because I'm so approachable and tangible to the clients. That's and very cool. And I'm, I'm, I, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I multitask in that regard. So that helps me too, having that background. Right, right. And that's awesome. I mean, you know, you got your experience in, in, in your company and you, then you branched out to something that I think is, it's pretty well related, you know, social media and, and managing all the accounts. So that's pretty cool. And, and I'm happy. I mean, you, you know, it's, it looks like you've, you've come a long way. You learn, you live through the journey, the ups and downs. And, you know, we talk about this all the time. I mean, the, the entrepreneurial mountains and the valleys that can be very high, but it can also be very low. Yeah, definitely. So I'm conservative with like, you know, the finances. I make sure I always have like a nice amount in, you know, the coffer, so to speak, because you never know <laughs> when the rainy day is going to come. And, right. you know, I, as it always goes back to my really strong allegiance and responsibility dedication to my team um as i feel as though i'm like the mother hen here and i'm you know i need to take care of them so i make sure i make very very intelligent and responsible decisions as the business owner for this company so that they all have job security you know as best as i can provide it obviously that's so cool i'm so happy to hear that and Thank you. I mean, for through all the, you know, all of what you've done in your, in your company, trying to build them both, what would you think, or what would you say to everybody that is listening, that would be your secret to your success and to everything that you've achieved? Being a good business person, always first and foremost, it's easy to sometimes, uh, I guess, uh, deviate from that path. I mean, things have happened. I've had opportunities to, I don't want to say steal clients, but take them from competitors. And I basically am a strong believer in karma. 
you know, I'm not going to turn business down, but I'm not going to do it the wrong way. Um, I'm not going to stab anyone in the back because I, it comes back to you threefold. I'm a believer in that. And, um, you know, just making, doing the best, being a good person first. And then, you know, that fall parlays into like the business sector, just to always do the right thing and work really hard, have pride in yourself and your good name. Cause literally that's all you have. If you don't have that, you have nothing in the business world. Very cool. I hope everybody's taking note of this. Because that's, you know, that's, that's legit. I mean, that is, uh, you know, a true lesson from somebody that has been in business for many, many years. And, and only that, I mean, you represent other big names. So. Thanks. Good, yeah. I have, some good... client, I have some professional athletes and, you know, some actresses and actors and big brands and small ones are all important. They all, I take them all to heart literally because they all invest their time and money into me and, and trust obviously first and foremost. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change gears a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna I have to move. go in just a few minutes though, because I have okay. to my daughter for. Okay. Minute. How many how many minutes do we have? So I'm gonna rush it. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna, I have to run to the emergency room. <laughs> the other half and come back to work. It's an all That's the funny. entrepreneur world, right? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So we're gonna do this real quick. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry. So. No, you're good. So the house of round is where I basically give you a few words. It's I'm going to give you one word and then okay. whatever first word comes into your mind, that's the one okay. you're going to say out loud. Okay. okay. Yep. Sounds good. All right, let's, let's do it. Hustle. Hustle. Run. Work. Books. Employee. Uh, meetings. Boss. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Rules. Ruler. College. Oh, uh, this is my sorority. <laughs> 85. There you go. Fear. Fear? Um, a haunted house. <laughs> I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> good. The lamest thing you ever had. All right, Weakness. Weakness? My trainer. <laughs> Strength. Um, the, the weights he makes me lift. Okay. The trainer. Motivation. Oh, my business, coming to work. And last but not least, books. Books? I'm the one sitting on my nightstand about how to be a better leader. Cool, all right. You, you, did, you did pretty fast there with the bustle around, so you're, you're good for you. Oh, good. good. So okay. uh, before we leave, I mean, um, you know, very proud of everything you've done, and I wish you the best of success out there. I know you're headed the right way, and you're going to explode, and... You know, hopefully, you know, soon you're going to have the national and you're going to be international and you're going to be the PR girl in the world. Thank so, you. I hope so. Produce, produce. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you, if you can share just a motivational hustle quote to everybody that is listening to us right now to keep them, motivate them and, you know, motivate them and, you know, to keep pushing and to go after their dreams. Okay. So you're always going to have a bad day, but you're always going to have a good one too. That usually follows it. So when you wake up and you're a little tired, you're a little sluggish, you're not feeling it, just do it like the Nike slogan says, because it will pay off 12 fold. I promise you. And always believe in your dreams and believe in yourself because if you don't, no one's going to. I love it. Cool. So is there any way that people can connect with you and find out yes. more about you? All right. So I have two websites, www.mb and associates pr.com or www.commandbuzz.com sweet and, and, I'll, and i'll make sure on twitter and instagram and you know and all the media yeah okay cool and I'll, I'll make sure that i link to everything in the show notes too at the okay. hustle show.co slash tsh it was so awesome being part of your show. I wish you the best of luck too. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, I know we had to do this in a rush, but I really appreciate you taking the time yeah. and I wish you nothing but the best. And you know, hopefully we stay in touch. Yes, definitely. I'd love to do it again sometime. Sure. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. So there you have it. The story of Mindy Barnett. And she, you know, she's a true hustler. She's a, a mompreneur and CEO, and I'm very proud of everything that she's done. And like I said at the beginning of the interview, I mean, we left and edited the part where she, we had to rush the interview because that just shows you that even successful CEOs of founders and companies, they still have family, they still struggle, you know, they're still hustling and they still have emergencies right up and they're still 
you know they, she wanted so bad to be in the shell so we kept going and we and we rushed it but we did the the interview and and I'm very happy that we were able to finish it on time so that she could take care of her her emergency but you know again thank you Mindy and thank you to everybody that is listening to us right now I hope you you hit the subscribe button right now and I hope to you tune in to the next episode as we have another amazing entrepreneurial story to share with you okay keep hustling Guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the Hustle Show audio experience. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And even if you didn't, make sure you subscribe to the podcast right now. It's still free. Visit thehustleshow.co for all the show notes and to watch the video experience of this episode. We'll see you soon.